Like, seriously, can you believe this is a one guy, one developer game? I just, just what the hell, man? I <laughs> just, I, the things people are able to do today are just boggling my mind. Welcome back to Manor Lords. I do hope you're having a swell day today. Our people are doing pretty well, but they don't have a whole lot of wealth. And that's the thing I want to look at today. We don't have a lot of regional wealth. I keep spending it. We keep trying to invest into in, into things. And now I want to start producing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um. Um. Dude, I had things I want to do today. Okay, so you walking towards my border? It just uh. You know, I got things I want to do, all right? I don't need this. Honestly, I, I'll probably just hire mercenaries. If they if they want to attack or they want to do something, they're, they're probably coming over here uh, to that bandit camp. Ah, there's outlaws on the map. Well, hey, we know how that's going to go. Speaking of trying to give my people some wealth, how about we go and steal that? <laughs> We're just going to keep doing this. Um, let's create a new militia real quick. We'll just do the footmen. That's fine with me. They don't need a whole lot here, right? I honestly would like to, you know, they don't, they don't have any, do they need shields or what? Why does it say an equipment missing? Oh, I think what it is, is like to have a full 36 people in this, you need more swords. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, all right. So rally and we're going to just send you guys uh, over here towards the road. I'm going to have you go over there. Yeah. And we're just going to steal that. And then we will give that to our town. We will give that to the region. Now, it may, because it goes to the nearest, it actually looks like it probably will end up going to Goldoff instead, which is not quite what I'm looking for. But you know what? If I have to expand Goldoff with it, that's fine too, I guess. We can look at that. There's just so much I need to do in Goldoff, man. There's I, I need a lot more fields over here. So... We're going to look at that, but I wanted to focus on Charlestown today because I want to get to level three plots. Oh, hi. What is this? My camera's being zoomed to the edge of the map. For what reason? I don't know. There's nothing over there. Also, did you guys notice this? Can we zoom out? Look at this. It's it's a map. Like, that's our development. I, I just never noticed it. It's just... Totally escaped me. Probably because I'm so used to like looking at all these regions and they're not developed at all. And but yeah, like all of this is that's our town right there. It's all laid out. Pretty sweet. So anyway, how are we gonna focus on wealth today, right? How are we gonna raise people's wealth? Well, I wanna focus on trade a little bit and start looking at what we can do to sell things. And uh everything that gets sold through here goes into your regional wealth, which is great for everybody else. And if we can raise how much our people are able to make per month we can then institute taxes that allow us to take more into our treasury per month as well we still have we have a lot in our treasury at the moment so i don't really care to bring in more um but it, in order to get a permanent army back which we haven't needed yet because i keep paying for mercenaries I'm, albeit that's more expensive in the long run uh but i enjoyed having uh and these guys, so they're, they're walking through my territory, which is a little bit weird, but I guess that's a thing that you can do. It's not like civilization where they have to go around it. All right, you guys, you don't need to run anymore. You're good. <laughs> uh, we're actually going to have these guys go. So we're closer to them than they are. We don't want to get too close. I'm going to have you guys rest right on the border here. You're just going to rest right on the line. All right. And so not crossing into this, uh, into this territory. And then when these guys react and they go that way, that's when we run in. We'll have a whole bunch of energy and we can run in at that point. So we'll just keep an eye on it for now. Uh, all right. A new family just moved in. So I have capacity for 31 people. And that is my 31st person right there. That's it. Um, these plots right here are under construction. They're going to be upgraded so that they're level two as well. Level two Burgage plots will generate one gold for me or one silver or whatever the hell it is, um, per month each. If I can raise them to level two, uh, sorry, level three, which is just hover anywhere here. Um, I need 25 regional wealth to do this. And then they will generate not only one extra 
regional wealth per family, but it will also allow for an extra family to be there, which will increase my population limits as well, I would assume. Um, there's also the, you know, the expansionist plots as well, which I want to take a look at getting expansionist plots today as well. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Um, first thing I want to do for raising wealth for everybody and just trying to have something to sell, is I'm going to staff somebody in the dyer's workshop. So we're going to have a family that works to make dyes and they're going to go to the granary real simple, grab berries and make dyes out of it. All right. And then that gets sent over to our stockpile. We need someone st staffed at the trading post in order to really do this. But in order to get a dyes trading route, all right, I could establish a trade route to make sure there are people who want to buy this stuff. Also takes regional wealth. Everything about this requires wealth to invest to make more wealth. So we need to raise our population and we need to, you know, raise all this stuff up. So it looks to me like I got to focus on wood at the moment. So because I need to make more places to live. So logging camp being over here, what it is, we, we have 16 timber, but it's taking a while to bring it places. Um, you might notice that between the end of the last video, this is probably only people who are paying really close attention to this stuff. And I doubt it. Um, between the last video and this one, these numbers up here have changed a little bit. So regional wealth used to be 21. And uh, I, I bought another ox. So we have four oxen now. Uh, but they're both stabled over here. And I don't think this is actually the best place for them anymore. So I kind of want to move their stables. And I, I think I'm going to move them over on this side. So that they're kind of closer to where the timber is, right? A lot of the oxen are mostly just using, like, they're, they're doing things with timber all the time. So I, I think I want to do that a bit. Now, I like the logging camp being stationed here primarily because this is where the wood is stored. And so the oxen can go get the wood from here and bring it over to places. But at the moment, most of my oxen are spending time wa walking all the way over here to get the wood because I'm cutting it down over here. And that's taking up a lot of their time, which is time they're not able to spend bringing it into construction projects in here, which is why we have burgage plots that are still under construction because, you know, they need 12 timber to, to upgrade those. Uh, but that should help my regional wealth a little bit. I've got somebody stationed in a malt house now. And they're going to be able to get the malt. Uh, they're going to be able to take the barley that we're harvesting right now, make malt. And now we need our tavern, don't we? Indeed. That'll make people happier. But it doesn't raise my wealth very much. But it does make people happier. And I think happier people leads to getting a population even higher, right? So we'll take a look at doing that once we have a good amount of malt kind of like stored up and saved up. Um, but I need to focus on the wood at the moment, I think, in here. So, sorry, I'm like adjusting my adjusting my headset while I'm trying to figure out what to say. Uh, so just like taking a look at all the other resources that are vital to our survival, charcoal, firewood, all that stuff is looking pretty good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assign one of the charcoal kiln families and I'm going to get another logging camp, okay? And what I want to do is probably place it over here. It's a little bit closer to where we're cutting down the trees. I like maybe like right here is fine. And then this can go ahead and cut things down. We're also going to oh, come on, man. It just it just really zooms in sometimes. And I'm not entirely sure what's causing it. I don't know if I'm the only one that has that problem, but sometimes the camera just takes right over, man. All right, I'm going to take the Forester's Hut here. We're going to place that kind of right here. It's probably fine. We'll just make a road that comes through here. And it doesn't really matter where it comes through, does it? I don't think so. We'll just do this. All right, so when these two places get built, and I'm going to have them make this highest because I really want those th two things done. We're going to tear down this Forester's Hut, and we're essentially relocating all of the forestry efforts over here so cutting down trees and planting trees will originate from this spot now and we're just going to farm this area for trees for a little bit but i still want this for our log storage so how do i do that well i'm going to have a, a place for dedicated livestock here we're going to have one oxen that's dedicated to this building and this building is the oxen's going to run over and get the wood and bring it back that's all it's doing okay and so I'm hoping that by having a dedicated ox in here, I will end up bringing more wood from this side over here. And then these guys can just basically focus on cutting down trees from this side and the oxen can bring it over here. Not entirely sure if that's how this is going to work, but 
The cool thing about this game is that when you tear down a structure, you get 100% of your resources back. So there's room for experimentation and things like this. Let's uh, focus over on the army over here. I don't want to like miss my opportunity to get this. So my army's sitting here resting, which is pretty good. These guys over here have been just casually walking in. It takes a long time to move, man. All right, as soon as these guys organize and start moving, as soon as they start moving forward, it should be any second now. There it goes. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take, go take the camp. There it is. Yeah, apparently they're going to go around it this side to take it. But we're going to go take it now. We're going to run in there and do that while these guys fight. And we're going to add this to our regional wealth. And I'm hoping, I don't know this, but I'm really hoping that it goes to Charlestown. But I, I just, I feel like it's going to go to Galdoff and there's nothing I can do about it. All right, we're going to take that camp. Take the 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 camp. There it is. All right, apparently you can't take the camp until after they're broken. So we're just like waiting to snipe it. Uh, we're going to take it to send it to the nearest town. doesn't tell me which town it is. Regional wealth gain 136. It looks like to me it went to Goldoff, which I guess is something. We'll just we'll just make it work. It's fine. So Goldoff has 166 regional wealth now. All right. We can we can work on that. All right. It's not a huge deal. Uh, what we'll do uh, over here on these plots, I want to get different types of resources going. So we're just going to invest in this, right? So um, let's get uh, chicken coops going over here so we can have some uh, some more eggs. And we can have like, say, let's do three vegetable gardens as well. All right. So we'll just invest that wealth into this thing because they have it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at expanding what we can over here. Um, and then these here are going to end up being like the the more specialized people here. But we don't have the conditions not met. We don't have the timber. I think it's reserved. Yeah, I think the four timber is reserved for these. So I, 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 we have a lot of planks, though. Oh, my gosh. All right. We don't need any more planks. Thank you very much. Saw pit. We don't need it, though. Um, what about our firewood is pretty good. We don't have a charcoal kiln over here, and it's probably something I should look at doing as well. I keep forgetting where it is right here. Charcoal burning. Uh, oh, we need to have the development branch unlocked. Right, because the development branches are region specific. So I guess we're just stuck on firewood for these guys. I guess that's fine. It's going to have to be fine because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> Other than that, right? Um, we can probably get some hides going and some a tannery and stuff. Start getting some... Because you have to meet their needs, right? Clothing supply doesn't have leather, so we're going to have to do that too. So how about we grab the... We already have a hunting camp here, so I'm sure there's probably a lot of hides in this area. Um, now, we could take our pack station, okay? We could pack up the hides and send them over here and then send the leather back. We could do that. Um, yeah, there's probably not really a whole lot of cause for that right now because chances are... I have to look at it, but chances are the hides would just the leather would just get used here right we have a lot of hides we, well, we still have 11 hides here so you know the tannery is it's working consistently but it doesn't we don't have any leather available anyway so unless i add somebody new to the tannery which is possible um but it's, unless i do that it's interesting i have gold off up here but i'm looking at charlestown is that weird i think that's weird right that's that's weird yeah it's not giving me Ah, there it goes. It's a beta. <laughs> That's going to be my excuse. So I don't want to miss any opportunities to expand my population and stuff. And next month, of course, I'm going to need housing available. So we're going to go into these Burgage plots, level one. And we're going to expand the space. And we're going to do this for two of them, right? Remember, these plots here that we laid in, these were expansionist plots, right? They could have two buildings on them. So we just kind of spaced them out a little bit that way. Uh, so we're going to have that happen. And then uh, as soon as they do that, wow, I got real quiet when the music stopped, huh? Real quiet. As soon as they do that, uh, you know, we'll be able to have more people. So I'm going to have you, your work area is here. You're just going to be growing trees in this area all the time right here. And I'm going to want somebody to work there. So we're going to add a forester on that side. And then we can go ahead and stop the forester on this side and delete this building. We do not need a forester 
over here anymore. Forester is now dedicated uh, right over here. And I might actually put two people on it just to start things off so we can have those trees growing really quickly. Access weapon storage. Joiner's shop. No space for access weapon storage. I, I don't I don't know what you mean by this. Okay, like I, I have plenty of space in the storehouse. Okay. Now, I know you guys want to store your weapons inside your own buildings. I, I get it. But, I mean, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> you have generic storage right here. Six out of 30. Like, what do you want me to do about it? I don't think there's anything I can do, right? I don't think there's anything I can do about that. Blacksmith, uh, we have you back to making sidearms now, since we're a little bit short on that. We've made 21 pole arms. That's pretty sweet. But we're having a hard time keeping up on planks, so I'm shifting it over to just purely iron slabs, since we have a whole lot of those. And uh, yeah, pretty much to make everybody happy here to get to level three, right? We need that regional wealth and and, and we need planks. So we're going to hopefully stock up on planks now that we're not making pole arms. And um, they need the tavern anyway. But this is a this is a process. So I'm working on it. And also part of this process, I have three people in the farmhouse right now, too. So when the winter time happens, I can pull people out of the farmhouse and that'll be great. I think actually I'm going to go down to one person in the mining pit uh keep the bloomery on keep the clay furnace on keep the mining pit on and trading post okay so for the trading post we're gonna set up a trade i need reasonable wealth to spend it that's the thing because i can't i can't set up the trade route for dyes i'm gonna i'm gonna tell it to export dyes and we're gonna say we have since we have 11 right we're gonna say that our excess surplus on this is is one so they'll sell almost all of their dyes and if we can do that, I can just say zero, I suppose, too. Um, if we can do that, though, then that'll give us 44. And that allows us to set up a trade route for it so that people will come here more regularly. Because it's not going to be very easy. I wouldn't think it's very easy to sell this stuff unless you have, unless you know you have somebody coming to get it, right? So we're going to want to do that. Make sure people are coming to get it. Um, and then the next thing we could sell in the short term are iron slabs. We could sell some of these. So let's say I want my export, my surplus of iron slabs. Let's say I want that to be, uh, I was going to stop at 60. That's why I keep clicking it individually instead of typing it. But I just like deciding where I want to stop as I go. We're going to go with 50 and that, so that we'll sell, end up selling more of these to export as well. And then that will help us as well. Um, now herbs, something we need for medicine. And I don't know if we're going to get diseases or anything yet. We haven't had that problem yet, but a forager's hut if we had the resources, which we don't, but I could add um, the herb garden to the forager's hut, and then that will allow them to grow herbs, okay? And then they'll, you know, add this. So there's something for them to do when there's no berries, which at the moment, they're really, I had them unstaffed from here. I've had people tell me I can do that. I know I can do that. I did that last time. I just cut around it. You never saw it. <laughs> anyway, um, forager's hut. That's the thing. Like a lot of times I do things and you guys don't see it because I end up cutting, right? my videos get really long I, I don't want them to be long i really don't like my, my videos are longer than an hour and i hit that mark so many times and it just annoys me i know it doesn't annoy you but it annoys me all right because it's like man i i'm, I'm looking for hour maximum 45 minutes is my goal always i'm always trying to strive for 45 minutes and it just never happens so maybe i should just strive for an hour from now on so i'll never be disappointed All right, we can finally start seeing some of these plots getting constructed. Now, some of the things that uh, I was told, and I didn't notice this, but it's pretty cool that it's happening if this is the case. The people who live here, they're the ones that are upgrading these buildings. The people who live here, which I, th I, th I didn't notice that. I, I think that's really awesome. So we don't really need builders to upgrade these because the people who live there do it already. And since I've got four oxen now, you know, we can have that one dedicated to the lumber. We have one dedicated to the farm. And now we've got two that can roam around and do this, which is pretty good. I like it. Um, but I do want to change where their stable is. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alter this stable here. I'm going to bring this stable, I think, back over here. I think so. Yeah, this stable is going to go there. And we're going to have that be a highest priority right now so that we can do that. Oh, another thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, for the livestock trading post, right? So remember how I was saying that I wasn't sure if I should buy sheep here because like you can buy them and then they don't show up 
And that ended up not being the case because the sheep totally showed up. Um, well, we need more work. I'm actually going to put somebody here. Um, it wasn't sheep. I just misremembered what animal it was. It's mules. So I went ahead and tried to buy mules. And it says that I have a current surplus of two mules. But you'll notice that we have four oxen, four sheep, two mules in this list. But if I look up the top, it says I've got eight livestock. Four sheep, four mules. Or four oxen, no mules. Okay? So it, they appear here. They take your money, but they don't appear here. And I thought maybe they're in limbo, but I did this many months ago, so they shouldn't be in limbo. Um, and then also you might think, well, maybe they went to Goldoff. Uh, they didn't. So if I come over to Goldoff, there are two livestock here, both of them are which are oxen. So the mule are, is the thing that's kind of in limbo. I, I'm not entirely sure how to buy it, but that's a bug um, for sure. Like you buy a livestock from here and it doesn't give it to you. All right. So I got that turned off. I don't know what other livestock I can't buy from here, but so far it seems like sheep work. So I'm going to go with sheep being the thing I can buy. But the thing is, they're not sending the sheep to the pen over here. And I feel like I need more than just two sheep over here to really start growing this population and having things grow. I went ahead and got that advancement, you know, sheep breeding, uh, but they're not breeding. <laughs> Probably because there's only two of them, which you might think, hey, that's all you need. But maybe they're both male. All right. <laughs> maybe they're both female. I need more diversity in that pen to make this happen. And um, they might be over here and they're just not being moved over there. And I'm not sure why. So I'm going to have, um, you know, a person stationed here and we're going to see whether or not they move it. They also should be buying sheep uh, as soon as they have enough regional wealth to do so. We have 16 regional wealth now. I'm going to hopefully that, that see that expand. But since we have 16, let's come over to our trades. And uh, we're going to make sure. Oh, never mind. I need 24 for that. Uh, okay. Well, you can see some people maybe are buying this. And that might be why we're getting the regional wealth there. So we'll just keep an eye on it and hope that uh, more people come into the trading post. But yeah, I want to have more sheep in here in this pasture. I need it. Um, because otherwise, there's really no point to having this weaver. Uh, right. There was a weaver. I put that down, right? Didn't I? Where's no weaver? Oh, right there. There's no point in having the weaver. Well, actually, wait a minute. Now, we had the flax. Didn't we Didn't we harvest flax just now or no? I actually don't remember what we harvested. Uh, 13 flax is not a mu not much. That's not much. Um, we only have 19 barley in stock, and that's probably because the malt house has been working with it. So, yeah. There's 15 malt here. I, I think maybe we just give it to him, yeah? Can we just give it to him right now? Let's just give him the tavern. Tavern's going uh, over here. We're just going to give it to him. All right, that's fine. We don't have a whole lot of timber, but <laughs> we're going to give it to him anyway. Uh, as long as they build the expansion slots first, which they should be doing. Under construction, under construction. They should be transporting. There's my oxen. Transport this wood over here. There we go. Now that can be built by the people who live there. And now we have enough room for another family. Very good. All right. And now we need to start, you know, raising the levels on these so we can have more wealth. So the more we can, uh, the more places we can upgrade, the better. And you can see these places here are starting to get upgraded some more as well. Just need a little bit more. Uh, well, more. We just need more uh, timber and stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm thinking, how do we store the logs closer? Right. How do we do that? Oh, this communal oven isn't done yet. I have builders. They're focused on those other properties. So let's get that communal oven done. I want the bread. Actually, we probably can't even do that because we don't have the windmill done either. This, yeah, the construction priority is really high. Or not high. It's it's the, the transported goods are already here. They're just sitting here waiting to build it. So it's really just about getting builders. I think I've just had no builders for a while. And they just never bothered to do it. But there's a communal oven. And we can have somebody stationed in there as soon as we get the windmill going too. Because we want to get that the grain grinded into flour so we can make the bread. And it's way over there. I realize the windmill probably would be better over here. I probably should move it to be over here. Uh, it's not too late. It's just sitting over here. It's not too late. Um, but I think it's kind of the same, isn't it? Let me... Uh, evaluating this, right? Like, the grain needs to be brought to here. 
or the flower needs to be brought to here. It's the same trip. It doesn't matter. The only thing changes is the back and forth with the farm. And grain and flour are both not used for anything different. So I don't think that matters. I could split the difference and put it here, though. That would probably be better. But then I, I want my pens and stuff. I think I will split the difference here. Because there might be room for another farmhouse here, actually. I'm going to split the difference. Where is the farmhouses? In case later on, I want... Yeah, I think I can fit that here if I get rid of that road. Let's get rid of this road. There we go. And then as soon as these resources are out of the way, which might take a bit, but... Is there a way to add like a stockpile for this stuff? Like a separate dedicated stockpile for this stuff? Logistics. Do, do the storehouses... Like they don't do that, right? I don't think so. I mean, I'd really like to get another... I'd really like to get another hitching post. <laughs> be honest um another stable and stuff would be great i could put it back here i'm gonna get another one all right it notified me it says deposit exhausted mining pit we now are out of clay we have no more clay left to mine here and so we can demolish this and get rid of it and we can just have more farmland here if we want to right Got rid of all that. Now, we're not going to run out of iron for a long time. This is a rich deposit. We've got thousands of iron. So this thing is something we can really start, you know, pumping out. I'd like to start maybe selling swords and stuff too, which would be good. Uh, but I don't want to sell any swords until I get a feel for how many people are coming to raid us. I don't want to have a shortage of weapons just because I opted to sell them. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So there's two families living here. I got to wonder if the mood is different for the family that lives in this house versus this one. I'm not sure how that works because they're not that big of space, right? We'll go ahead and add the living spaces here too. And then we'll simply upgrade when we have enough resources to do so. All right. So they built the windmill and we'll just go ahead and put somebody in it and it, <laughs> it moves. Of course it moves. Why would I think it wouldn't move? Of course it does. There it is. That looks pretty cool. It's uh, It's got an interesting base to it. It's almost like... I don't know. It's almost like they really want it to be susceptible to tipping over. <laughs> uh, but the, the, attention to detail, right? Things like this. I really appreciate it. I just wanted to point this out because it's just super cool that they've done this. You see how the, the bottom of it is, is right here? This is not level ground. So they've got this big stone underneath it. And then they've got this one underneath it. That one. And then this one here, it's, it's slightly thinner, right? But it's there they've leveled it right it's on uneven ground and they've used these extra bits here to level this i think that's amazing that they put that kind of detail into the game and it's very situational right you wouldn't get this stuff necessarily and may maybe you do maybe i'm wrong maybe you do get these types of things and it's just gonna level it anyway like maybe there is a little bit underneath this i think i maybe see that there so maybe these things are generated anyway underneath all these structures but I've just been like noticing that like when you put it on uneven ground, you sometimes get stuff like that. And it's it's really, really cool that to see that, you know, they've, they've done things to level it. But the design of this building, though, I just and maybe I'm just, you know, not caught up with architecture or whatever. But I feel like this is very susceptible to tipping over <laughs> like a real strong gust of wind is going to take that thing out. That's what I think. Uh, oh, well, anyway, communal oven. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll give us some bread. Uh, we're up to 76 happiness at the start of the month, which should mean that we get two families this month. That'll be the first month in which I get two families, which is great. We're up to 36 capacity, so we can handle it. Um, but as soon as we get that, we are going to want to take a look and, you know, getting more under construction right here, right? We got to get this timber over here. They're already starting to bring it. We need to start doing that. We got the tavern done now. It's very good. So let's go ahead and do that. And that's going to make everybody even more happy as they are now going to have ale. Oh, yeah. There we go. So these guys are starting to build their house. I'm going to start upgrading everybody, right? That's what we got to do. Upgrade people, give regional wealth. Here we go. We got 64. And we can go over to the trading post real quick. I want to see if there's maybe if it's worth setting up a trade route for dyes. Again, the thing is, though, 
You want to use dyes to make other things later. This is a temporary thing. And we still have 52, so we're not selling all of them anyway. So I'm actually going to take that back a little bit. Maybe instead, we look at things like tools. These are commodities, right? We look at things like shoes, but we're not making enough of those. We're making a lot of tools. We could sell a lot of that stuff. That's possible. Um, if we can make better, if we can make clothing, that'd be great. But the, the problem with clothing is we don't have a lot of flax fertility, right? We need to get that from the other, uh, the other side. And that's over, over here. We need to get that from here. Now over here, I don't believe we really harvested anything this year, right? We got 11 hides. That's it. But we didn't really get any, any, uh, fields yet because we didn't have enough people to do so, but we're starting to get people now. And we can start looking at, I think, getting more oxen and stuff over here, too, because we're going to need it. Um, and this region has a bunch of wealth now, so we, we can afford to, like, say, you know, get more stables and buy more oxen and get more working animals on the plethora of fields that we're about to have. Uh, speaking of which, real quick, let me just go in and see. Oh, yeah, barley. Barley and flax. That's right here. That's what we want. Um, let's make a really big field. Or many small fields. Honestly, many small fields would be fine too, right? Let's do something like this. We'll say... Uh, we'll go like this. And we'll bring it down about here. And we'll just connect there. Like This is one and a half Morgan. That's fine. And then we can do another one. Uh, we'll start over here. You know, about like this. Maybe we just wrap around. I don't know. I want a really big field is what I'm looking for here. Um, I, I want an irregular shape, right? I, somebody said, you know, things like re irregular shapes. It's a shame you went with like rectangles and stuff, right? Um, <clears throat> the, the thing is like, it's, it's difficult to make irregularly shaped things unless you make the, the road first. So that's kind of where it is. Like, I think the natural order of things is to make squares. Um, but when you already have these roads that are going all over the place and then you have to adapt to where the roads are. So if I wanted an irregularly shaped field just to have one. Right, I'd have to have like a road that kind of does like a curvy thing like this, and for there's got to be some reason for this road to exist, right? Um, so maybe we have it come all the way down, uh, maybe like this, like this, and then like this, and then we just kind of alter the shape of it a little bit around the edge. That's not really working out, is it? That's why I say like the curve on these roads is a little bit weird. This curve tool, it just does strange things sometimes i'm not really sure about it sometimes you almost have to do really small changes you know you could do something like this with a curve right and then if we did that then i'd be able to take this field and then say i want to wrap around this road and now i've got a reason to have this irregularly shaped field that does you know it's not a grid it's got this arc you know which is totally fine you know, whatever. Like, I, I like it. And um, we're going to do it because it, it looks really nice. It looks really cool to have these irregularly shaped things for sure. Um, but there just hasn't really been a huge need for it um, yet because the roads weren't made. So I could just draw boxes. Just how the tool works. Um, so let's take the logistics hitching post. We're going to want another one right there. And I'm actually going to put another one right over here. We're going to have a lot of these oxen, man. We're going to have a whole bunch of them available in this area. And I'm, honestly, like we probably, because the thing is you can dedicate a farmhouse to have an oxen, right? But they still need the hitching post. They're still going to go there. They're still going to go to the stable, right? So it's like, even though you add a plowing station, they'll still be resting here. They're just, no one else is going to use it. You just, only the farms will use it, right? It's kind of what we're doing there. Um, so, yeah, we'll have these guys go ahead and build the hitching post. They should be really, really fast to build. And then we can take... Uh, I'll, I'll just upgrade it right away to a small stable. I think that's fine. We're going to be using a lot of oxen here because there's going to be a lot of fields. There we go. And then we'll buy the oxen. Uh, I think we could probably buy the oxen later. We don't need it right away, but yeah. All right, so hold on. We're at... Uh, in gold off. we have 15 living space and we're up to... We only have four people assigned to jobs here. I feel like that's a bit of a mistake. Let's do saw pit. More logging camps. Uh, Woodcutter is probably fine. Storehouse. We can have two on that, I guess. Uh, to get mules, I believe you have to buy them from the station. Right? You can buy them from the pack station, I believe is what we're going to have to do. 
So if I order a mule here, there's two spots for stables. If I order it here, we'll see what happens, right? Does the mule actually show up <laughs> is what I want to know. If it does, great. Uh, then we have at least a way to get mules. But otherwise, I don't know how else to get mules if they don't show up to the station. But I, I want to be able to trade, of course, right? I want to have a mule that can take things from one place to another. And so we're going to keep an eye on this and see if the donkey shows up, all right? Uh, let's come back on over here to Charlestown. It's in the winter time, And we have five months of food and six months of... Or, fuel vice versa all right let's strike that reverse it and um we have uh stability for the most part we have stability hey wait 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 look at this pasture space pasture space five sheep one lamb where is it where is it is it in here they're not taking it to the pasture i have dedicated over there it says there's one lamb I don't know where they are. I want to see the little one. Look at this guy. Now, what are you taking it over here for? I got pasture space over here. Yeah, four out of 42. Here we go. Yeah, now we're starting to produce our own sheep. This is what I'm looking for. We want to see wool. So we can begin to use the weaver. So iron is one of our region's big strengths, right? So we should leverage that for money is what I'm getting at. Um, and now that we have a little bit of regional wealth to go, I'm going to go ahead into the trade screen. I'm going to find commodities, tools, right? I'm going to set up a trade route for tools so that we can have a dedicated person coming in here all the time and buying our tools. So we're going to say export tools. And I'm going to say that we want to keep a surplus of, let's say, 40. So we can make a lot of money on this it's six for our export price and we've got 80 to sell and it's going to keep going up because our iron game is so good uh we can afford to do stuff like that so i can stash i'm gonna put two people on the smithy so we can really start cranking out the tools we got two people on the bloomery already and i can add another three to the mining pit just to make sure our iron industry is rock solid for regional wealth uh growth uh, but i will need one builder so let's not do that um we're going to need one builder because it's time to make more houses. We're kind of running out of space. Uh, I have a couple houses I can still expand. So this burgage plot here is now expanded. There it is. Uh, so we now have 37 housing space. This one here has already had its expansion. And this one here is under construction. So once these two are done with their expansion, that's it for my housing space. I'm going to have to make more burgage plots. And that's going to be right here. I think there's no better place for it to be here than here um and again we were looking at like you know we should have not straight lines and not, not grids and things like that and i, I I'm, I'm i'm into that i think that's fine so uh, i'm gonna go over like this and i'm gonna bring this down uh to connect i, I want it to be next to all right come here come here hold control there it is <laughs> have to hold control for this uh right there and then down into here like this now i need to do that so that these houses i'm about to put in are as close as possible to the market what burgage plots are we going to make? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, let's say, what, what does it look like if we make a different shape, right? So uh, we'll have the start go over here, I guess. And then uh, we can have it wrap all the way around to this spot here, I suppose. And then bring it all the way down like this. So it looks like our plots would look a little bit strange, right? To do something like this would be a little bit strange, it looks like. Um, if we rotate them... Yeah, it's like, it's not a very good setup. Like, it's it's kind of weird. So, like, this is a plot that would have just a house. Then there's this one, which is a big plot. So, it would have two homes plus an expansion. Then we've got two homes plus expansion. Um, This one here is... This one here is two homes and a gigantic expansion. But it's also, like, two huge spots for homes. Right, so maybe we try something like this instead. We start from here, and we can come up like this, and then around. Yeah, kind of like this instead. So now we have get home expansion. Um, these are just single plots, right? Yep, these are, just, these are just single plots. So from here, I could reduce, and now we have two families on 
Well, no, these ones are still a little bit too small to have two families. Interesting. All right, we'll go just a little bit further. That's got to do it, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how this stuff works, man. All right, there we go. So these are still single family plots. So we reduce it. We get double family. It's so weird that like this one's big enough to do it, but this one is not. You know, that extra icon needs to appear in the plot. And these ones are not big enough for that. I wish there was a way to um, just like make these different, I guess. Oh, here we go. Maybe this is how I needed to do it. This could work better. Really? All right. You're just pulling my chain now. Yeah, no way. I mean, I'm, I'm going to have what? One, two. So only here, only the edges have enough. These ones here don't have enough for two people. And there's no reason for me to do that. I might as well reduce. So at, at the moment right now, right, we have two, three, four, five, six, seven families. If I reduce the plots, two, four, eight, 10, 12 families, right? And then this big area right here, all of it, all of it with expansions, all of it with two families. I like it. We'll do that instead. And then over here on this side, we'll say, uh, we'll start here and we'll just add something like this some weird plot size like this. I might be able to get away with no, it's just this. Yeah, so this is a double plot as well, but it's a really weirdly shaped one. Maybe we don't need to go quite that weird. So anyway, that's the plan for increasing our wealth, right? We need to increase the levels of everything here, and we're going to start selling tools regularly. we got the smithy down here that's really pumping it out. Our iron industry is going to really be leveraged because we've got tons of it. So we need to do that to increase our people's wealth. And... Uh, and then, yeah, so I guess in the next video, I'm running out of time today, and I'm sorry about that, but I just, I had things I wanted to show you. Um, we have uh, a little bit of disapproval going on at the moment. It's not that big of a deal. We have 86, but there's a, a little bit of disapproval going on over here. These guys are pretty far away from the market because this road doesn't wrap around. They end up being pretty far away. So they have to walk all the way around like this, especially these guys. They're pretty far away. They can't walk through here. So I probably will take down this burgage plot once those ones are up, up and running. We'll probably take this one down and uh, we'll just, you know, delete it. And then I can have this road come through here and that will probably be better. And then at that point, I can put another plot here that's, you know, maybe a strange shape or something um, to appease the asymmetry gods. And uh, yeah, we have 17 stalls left in this market. It says 82% food variety. So if we hover over top of this, you know, we can see that there are certain people that are just do not have that need met. So we need to work on that, right? We have berries here. We have bread. We have eggs. We have even a little bit of meat. And we even have a little bit of vegetables. So there is options. There are options, I guess is the right words. Um, but, you know, eventually we can get apiaries and we can get honey that way. Uh, we can get apples put in here too. I would like to actually do this. I'd like to get the bees over here, the apiaries and stuff over here. I think that'd be pretty cool. And... uh yeah, so we're going to keep going with their needs, right? Keep expanding while also leveraging our iron industry a bit more to get uh, some money for our people as well. And then we can repurpose that money into, you know, investing in upgrades and investing in people. And over in Goldoff, we're going to have a lot of farming going on, right? We have a lot of spare labor that we don't need to have there all the time. Um, we're going to keep expanding. Their, their population is going to keep growing. We have plenty of houses for them to grow into, and then they will all get assigned to the farmhouse uh, as we go. Uh, we just need to make sure that they have enough oxen. So there's two oxen over here now. We're gonna have an additional ox purchase there. Uh, looks like I can only do this once per 30 days. Yep, okay, so that's fine. Uh, we'll have the two oxen that are already here. They're gonna go and be dedicated to these farms, right? And then they're gonna be able to plow these fields and stuff a lot faster, be more efficient. To wrap the video then, did we get the donkey? We did! The mule is here. So that's how we have to buy the mules. You have to buy them from the pack station, not from the livestock trader. It doesn't work. As far as I can tell, anyway, it doesn't work. But man, look at that guy. You know what? He is majestic. I am going to make him my thumbnail. You are a majestic creature. In fact, you are so majestic. I'm even going to go down into first person mode with you. I'm going to come right down in here. All right. You are a majestic creature. All right, I want everyone to know. I wish I could somehow rotate my camera without rotating my character. That'd be great, but it doesn't look like I can do that. 
so you are not my my this dude is not going to be part of the thumbnail just this this guy's the thumbnail <laughs> thanks for watching we'll see ya bye bye